and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host. Heather Baker. Yeah, and we are here with Jesse Norell. Well, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited to talk to you and about you've got an LP that's coming out, Aorta Borealis, coming out on March 4th. Yes. It's a big old party, uh, post-party release on, on April 8th at the Parkway Theater. Yes, so excited. <laughs> You know, I well, I'm excited. I'm excited for people to uh, to hear it, hear the album, hear the LP because it's 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 lovely. But I'm I'm not even going to try to tell the story because there's such a lovely story around it. So please tell us about the album and the making of it, and the inspiration, and thank you for asking. Uh, I'll I'll uh, this it kind of is a long story, so I'll try to to just hit the main talking points, which is. Um, I played in a bunch of bands around the Twin Cities from like 2003 to 2007. Like I hit, you know, the the 400 and the Uptown Bar and all the places that are closed now, those were like our stomping grounds. And at a certain point, it was just like the amount of work and money that I was putting in just didn't, it didn't feel rewarding enough for, for what I was putting into it. And so, and it also felt like there was just this saturation happening where I maybe just didn't need to lend another voice to what was happening. And so I stopped and the bands broke up and I stopped writing songs. I'm, I'm a guitar teacher, so I kept doing that. And I was around music and I'd sing with like my guitar students at recitals when they'd want to, you know, play a Coldplay song or whatever. And then, uh, but I wasn't writing music. And then um, in 2015, my daughter was born. She's my second born. Um, My son is eight and my daughter, uh, my son Tyler is eight. My daughter Alyssa is six now. So in 2015, she was born. And uh, we found out on the day she was born that she had Down syndrome and that she uh, had a pretty serious heart condition. So... um, during that time, I uh, sort of had even what I could do with music taken away from me. I got diagnosed with a pretty early onset rheumatoid arthritis. Like I'm not, uh, people that aren't, are only listening, I'm not 70 years old. Like it was <laughs> a, a surprise to me. And uh, so for a while, I mean, I could still strum a guitar, but I wasn't comfortable doing it. I didn't feel like I could stand or sit in one position long enough to play through a set. And then when I got properly diagnosed and I got proper um, medication, it's like the gift of music was given back to me. And all of a sudden this, this you know, 15 years off was like, well, forget that. I, I can do it again. So I want to do it again. It was an obligation in the best sense of the word to get back at it. And so I signed myself up to play two sets at a coffee shop for free, like a Dumb Brothers and uh, right before, like the week of, I just uh, wrote the, my first song in forever. And it was the story of Alyssa's birth and how I was expecting the day to go a certain way, like it went for my son. And it went a completely different way, a way that was filled with um, uncertainty and um, just feeling like, especially the heart surgery part was really like, I think the best people can understand that Down syndrome might not be so bad. That might actually be really great. But there's nobody that says, oh, heart surgery, yay. You know, everybody knows that that's bad news. There is no like simple open heart surgery. So I wrote this song about that day. And it, it's, a, it's a sad song. It's the first song in the record. It's called What to Tell You. And um, I played it at this coffee shop. I had to skip the like third verse because I was just like choked up and couldn't make it through it and uh, played this for people. And it, 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 it seemed to get a decent response. And then I was like, you know what? I don't want this song to live by itself because actually my story has a really happy ending in the sense that Alyssa got through a bunch of different surgeries, including actually two open heart surgeries. And now she's not on any medication at all. And she's on the longest leash with the heart doctor and everybody else that she can possibly be on 
they do these once a year checkups. And now I just get to enjoy this little girl who is actually wonderful. She's one of my favorite things ever. And so this story has a happy ending, but if you only have the first song, you don't get that. So I decided, hey, people do this Kickstarter thing, right? Let's, and it wasn't even about the money so much as it was about me knowing if people wanted to hear the rest because I needed to know ahead of time if people wanted me to make it. I think a lot of people that do Kickstarter, they've already got like, they're already going to do it anyway. They're just looking for funding. For me, it was like, if it didn't succeed, I wasn't going to do it. And it did. It raised enough money for me to make a record. I probably should have asked for more because I didn't realize quite how much it was going to cost. But still, it really got me rolling. It got me, um, you know, some gear I needed for a home recording studio. A bunch of my friends volunteered to play uh, so that I didn't have to, you know, spend so, as much as I could have on that. And then I was able to find somebody to mix it because I was still learning how to record myself and learning all these other things. I was like, I'm overwhelmed by this mixing process. Let somebody else do that. And so I was able to pay for those things and tell the entirety of the story, which includes... Uh, the first seven tracks on the album are really pretty somber and kind of dark and um, probably for people that really connect with it, like me, a little bit difficult to listen to maybe at times, but it's, um, and then the second half is just about celebrating family and I write a song, I write songs that just celebrate Alyssa, I write a song that celebrates my son and for how great he was for just being in like a distant second place to his sister who was having so many health problems. And I wrote a song about my wife and our marriage that survived that. And then the final track in the album is kind of a summary thing. So it's a whole cohesive, in my mind, it's a cohesive story of like five years of my life. When you talk about people like you listening to it, I think that this is a gift to be, and people like you is anybody who uh, who as a kid where something goes amiss or is going through a, a hard time. I mean, it can, you can extrapolate it out. Obviously anybody's going through exactly what you've gone through it, it, it you know, laser for them, but you, have you been getting, now have p enough people heard it yet that you're getting a response? Cause I could see this really being a lifesaver for so many people. Well, it hasn't been heard by that many people. It comes out on March 4th. Um, so at the time of this recording, it hasn't been heard a lot, but the people that have heard it, it's, it's hit with a very high percentage of success in people, in terms of people understanding what I'm trying to do. And the, the, the main thing that I was worried about is that people wouldn't see it as good news, right? Because it's so dives deep into the hardest parts of like near death experiences with a child is, is not like fun times. Right. right. But um, you know, I, I reached, I, I put it out there and uh, tried to kind of contact some people. I asked friends, who should I send this to? And somebody uh, said, Hey, send it to this person at uh, you know, WCCO news channel Four Minnesota news. And they, um, they said, we'd, we'd like to run a story on this. And I said, well, can you wait until March 4th so people can stream it right, right away? And um, Liz Collin, who did the interview, she said, no, my producers say we need good news today. And that to oh. me meant a ton oh. because it's like, no, we can't, we can't wait for this. We need to do this now. And so that they set up the interview in the morning. They told me in the morning that they wanted to do the interview and they ran the story that night. So it all happened oh. in one day which I was like, oh, my lighting's bad. Like, I don't think I wasn't ready for this, but okay, here we go. Um, so yes, overall, the um, response has been really good. I was talking to, I, I, I had a conversation with a couple of dads, one who has a, a story really similar to mine and another one who has, I think, four typical children. And they both just had a wonderful response. The one who doesn't have any kids with special needs or you know gigantic health problems, um, he said to me, "This is the sound of the pandemic. Like this to me speaks my feelings for the last two years of how everything has been going and how I want it to go. Like encapsulated in the album are all of these things for me. Plus, it helps me understand my co-host, the other dad, better." And they just, they like, when people say all the things you're hoping they'll, they'll say, you're like, yay, it's working. When you work on something for over a year, 
basically in isolation. And this was a pretty, like, this was a pandemic record, even though it wasn't about that. Um, you just don't know how it's going to be received. And it's a, such a, a blessing when, you know, you built your thing and you wound the toy up really tight and then you shipped it off and somebody says, hey, it worked when I received it. That's a really big deal. I loved when listening to it too. I agree with uh, whoever said that it felt like the pandemic because, and I, I really appreciate your honesty and your real time thoughts and feelings of stuff because I feel like people are really wiping things away and showing exactly what it is. And instead of going, what? Oh, it's not perfect all the time. Yeah. And this album does it. And I love that it's heavy and fierce and, but it's so delicate and beautiful mm. at the same time. Even, mm. I mean, it's so beautiful. Like you're like, it feels like a movie. You're listening mm. to the movie. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing to hear you say. Um, that is absolutely my approach to songwriting is I think of the scene in my head and what it looks like. And then I try to write it. So I, while I do have a lot of notes of different riffs and, and things that I write on my guitar, and then I have lyrics and melodies and I try to pair them together, a lot of the time it's just me thinking of the scene and sitting down with a guitar and trying to figure out what it sounds like. There's a song on the record. The fourth song is called Run the Long Race. And the first half has words and the second half does not. But the whole thing is conveying just an equal amount of meaning. Because at a certain point you run out of words, in particular with that song, is to describe what it's like to wait to see if the doctor says that your kid lived or didn't. And so the first half of the song is about saying, well, you know, uh, well, okay. I saw, let me, let me back up just a little bit. I saw a, um, a, a TV show once that basically posed the question, does a person's will to live affect like when they go under the knife, whether or not they come out and the TV, po uh, the, the, the show absolutely posed that it does like people that want to hang on to life are going to have a greater likelihood to do so. And so that's kind of what the first half of that song is about. Like, hey, you need to stick around. We want you to continue being with us. And that's kind of the first half. And then the second half is just kind of the waiting room process. And that's all instrumental. And I sent it off to um, my friend Ed Harper and his wife, um, Catherine Sullivan, who play ch uh, cello and viola and violin. And I said, here's kind of what I'm looking for. And then they come back with like, uh, here's a string quartet. How does that work for you? And I'm like, yep, that's it. Thanks. That's what I need. Um, so that lended it, you know, the, I've always wanted to work with a string section. Basically, this is the record I've always wanted to make. And I was really happy that I was able to do it. I was going to say, yeah, the strings on, I can't remember what song I wrote, but it, it guides us through your lyrics. Oh, even the song Together. It like just pulls you along with it so perfectly. Like I, I love strings cause they can, you know, bring us every emotion. And I don't know why that does more than any other instrument for me, but it really does. Yeah. I am so kind of addicted to the sound of strings that I'm just like, yeah, I could, I could use a bunch of samples and computer software to try to get at what the emotions that I feel when I listen to like a string trio or quartet or quintet or whatever. But it's like, man, it's right there. <laughs> like if I can use that, I'm totally going to do it. Um, that just, yeah, I just love it. I don't think it can be topped for me for the way I'm, I try to tell stories and the way I try to convey emotion. Like that's it for me. And like Heather, I, I love the strings too. I, I love the transition from the run the long race. And I, you know, I, the, when it gets to the instrumental part, because there, there is a point and in, in my, I have three kids, none of them have had any serious things, but we've all had where you're like, well, I'm just going to have to, you know, <laughs> just going to have to let this go. But yeah. the transition from that song then to how it feels to be on something. And it went from this very scattered to, 
it was right. it felt like such a, a that shift from that that we that we got during the pandemic that you get as a parent mm. that you get in life where you're letting go and then and I, I that song felt like it was like it was a hard song you know but it was yep. important to listen to and that you but you listen to it during some dark times maybe you know that yeah and thank you for that that's I, I love the things that you guys are are picking up on that the two of you are picking up on um and and so at the end of that song um it's kind of got this I I do my best impersonation of a heart monitor on an acoustic guitar at the end of Run the Long Race and that fades into a kick drum sort of heart beating that fades into how it feels to be something on um and just the entire, at least first uh, seven songs, I wanted there to be essentially no breaks. It's like, yes, they were written separately, but they need to feel like a cohesive unit. And um, I just don't, with singles and the way things go, it felt like kind of a throwback to some of my favorite records that used to do that a little bit more, that treated a, a group of songs as a unit a little bit more. And let me just mention that How It Feels To Be Something On is the one song I didn't write on the album. That's a cover of uh, Sunny Day Real Estate. Um, a guy named Jeremy Enoch wrote that and uh, he sort of gave me his, his blessing to use that, yes. which I really appreciated. Good, good. Well, and I... Say, oh, sorry. I, I was going to say, I. You said your groupings, the first one and the, and the second grouping kind of feels like an anthem and uh, like victory and just like even me being a grown ass person, I'm like, I want my dad or I want somebody I love to sing that to me because it just feels good and empowering and like to say you've been seen and heard and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I am going to cry here this mm guy I don't even know here is like pulling out everything making us all feel like the children that need to be seen and heard and valued and I just I think what a wonderful gift that you have given your daughter and family but all the rest of us that can't write or say the things and just play the song and go why don't you take a listen to this and have that connection oh you too you're so <laughs> kind my goodness um i i my hope was that you know certain songs are more just for me and others are more for the community um i think together works well as sort of a community song and then coming right out of the the more somber that like the dark half of the record you get this song that the hook is, we are the lucky ones, we are the lucky few. Um, those of us who know people like my daughter, Alyssa, and get to understand firsthand what a blessing that is, especially once they're healthy and it's not just about doctor's appointments and trying to figure out how to keep them alive. Um, and and so that song, the 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 lucky few I feel like is, is, you know, something that the community sings can sing. And then you are is the song after that. And, and, and that is something I wanted to write so that parents could sing to their kids, the parents could sing to their kids that, so they would understand that the, the value that they have whenever that's in doubt. It's kind of, cause what my own notes now on, on you are, it to me just feels like an, an explosion of joy. Like there's just hmm. a joyous song about it. Hmm. So to hear that that's for the kids is that that's awesome because the, the, the lucky few, well, uh, also very celebratory, but, but also it feels like there's a sense of, of obligation to share the story, which is celebratory, but in a different, with that sense of responsibility. Yeah. Thanks for that. I, I, and I think that coming out, I hope, I hope that what people feel is coming out of the darker section it's like, whoa, this light is really bright. You know what I mean? So like coming out of a, a, a cave or something like that, or, um, and, and by the way, 
that's what the title is about. The Aorta Borealis. Uh, Aorta is obviously a reference to the heart, which is a big deal on this record. And there's a lot of sort of everybody talks about the heart, right? Like heart is one of the most commonly used words in songs, um, especially if you listen to songs in Spanish, by the way, they all have corazón in corazón. them. <laughs> yes. So, um, but for me, it took on this whole new meaning because we're talking about literally a broken heart, right? So it, it I was able to use some of the things that maybe I would have found I don't know. I might not want to have used certain phrases before, but they added a layer of meaning for me that I appreciated. Um, so obviously, aorta is a reference to the heart. Borealis is a reference to the northern lights. And the northern lights is something that you can only see against the backdrop of darkness. If it's during the day, which I'm still like, this is the highest thing on my bucket list now is to see the northern lights. But it, it, and, and the time it was supposed to happen, it happened too late and the sun rose and I wasn't able to see it. And so that's the thing. It has to be against the backdrop of darkness so that you can see this beautiful, amazing light. And so that's what the album title is a reference to. And um, yeah, you mentioned the, the, the lucky few. Um, it's after that dark section, it starts with whistling. And to me, it's just like, what is the thing that I can do that would like you just couldn't do that on the first half of the record and then all of a sudden just the floodgates open and I get to you know be able to have fun and, and just mess around a little bit more and and write exercise my um my happy songwriting muscle which by the way is a little bit less developed than my sad songwriting muscle <laughs> so I had to work at that a little bit don't, don't you have a video or something coming out for that too the lucky few yeah yeah, so that, um, I, I don't know when people are going to hear this, but um, a 89.3 The Current is debuting that uh, uh, February 18th. So that's going to be on their website as part of their Friday Five uh, things or, or whatever the, the, that's called. So I'm excited for tomorrow. Um, and then it will be on my YouTube uh, channel after that. Um, and that one's fully animated. So my... <laughs> My, uh, my, my whole family got animated so that they could be in the video. And Alyssa is uh, a superhero saving the city from a robot invasion. <laughs> I love so it. It's so fun. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a blast to watch. Um, I, I really enjoyed. Um, I, I found this guy in uh, Uganda, I think it was, on Fiverr. And we just sort of hit it off and were able to communicate <laughs> really well about what I was looking for. And um, like, you'll notice that I'm in the video and I don't look anything like myself. Like that's the only weird thing for me. But other than that, I think it's, I think it's really cool. Um, and then there's a, a lyric video that's already up for the song Together. Um, and then the two that are unreleased at the, the present time are, there's a, like a, a video for You Are, which is a bunch of parents with kids with down syndrome sent me home movies and so it's just a compilation of their kids just singing and dancing and having a great time um and then i have one more uh lyric video for uh the song recovery so those are the four and and two are out basically now i was gonna say i love the recovery song too because it's so like heavy and chaotic and then you bring it into just like so delicate elements I think it's towards the end where I'm just like ah you know I can imagine like all the chaos and then it's like just ease into I don't you just have such a way of creating the the flow of everything guiding us through with the instruments too it's amazing wow Thank you again. I just, I feel like I could spend the entire podcast just thanking you for all the kind things you're saying. Oh. Recovery is, I think, I don't know if you guys, the two of you frequently ask your guests, what's your favorite song? Because I'm sure most of them can't pick. They're like my children. They would probably say, recovery is my favorite song on the record, <laughs> like hands down. Uh, I'm telling you are. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, that one, it, the, so I was trying to tell 
the you know one of the main hooks in that song is just there's this line about being nailed to the floor which is so I think people will pick up that there's a little bit of an element of being depressed in there like not being able to get out of bed which I think a lot of people will relate to given the times that we've been in but also for me I mentioned that I um had this diagnosis of uh, rheumatoid arthritis and I couldn't play with my kids on the floor which was really hard I couldn't you know bend my knees and do all the things that you need to do as a dad of a you know a two-year-old and a newborn it was just it was a really hard season and so again I'm thinking to myself okay so this is the next chapter what does it sound like and I was thinking about how much I love Green Day (laughs) and how I wish that they would do more than just play power chords. And so I'm like, well, what if like the Beatles were playing the guitars in Green Day? What would that sound like? And what if it was a seven measure uh, phrase instead of like four or eight? How would that work? And to me, that riff is like, it kind of starts in the middle of the 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 kind of the middle of the mountain and it climbs to the top and then it falls all the way back down and tries to climb to the top again and it's just this repeating like sliding back and continuing to fight and then at the end of the the song it climbs all the way up and is able to sort of reach the top and that's I think the the section that you were mentioning that it finally sort of breaks out of this sort of land slide that they keep going down and you have a line about time to get the help I need yeah. And I think that especially parents of little ones. Yeah. I, I always talk about um, how when you're on an airplane, they always say if the oxygen masks drop down, put it on yeah. your the person you're helping first. And I bet most people don't actually. Like I've never been in a situation where I've been able to test this theory, but my <laughs> guess is people take care of their kids first. But obviously the reason why they say that is they don't want you to pass out before you're able to help everyone else. And so that's sort of the metaphor for me is I ignored myself for long enough that I was pretty sick. And if you do that, you're not going to be able to help anybody else. Um, So that's, that's what that's about. It's the, and the, the help for me was a, a mental and a physical thing. It's diving into all of that and just being like, I'm not well, and I want to be for myself and for the people I'm caring for. Well, I think just with the title and with the imagery that you've used, I don't, I don't think you need to be a parent. I don't think you need to be diagnosed. Just if people find themselves in a hole that they need to have somebody say, you know, I needed to help myself. And I think that your music will speak to people when they need it. I, I sure hope so. I, I, so far people that have heard it that don't, I wouldn't expect to have a connection seem to be connecting. It's, it's a weird, I, I think I could have written this in a way that maybe was a little bit more, uh, I don't know, easy listening or, you know, poppy or something like that. But I need it it's so, just so that, you know, everyone would s- sort of like it, but it's an indie rock record, you know, through <laughs> and through. And uh, it, it's, it's, for me, this style of music, this kind of indie rock, like, but that, and I mean indie rock, okay. If the sandbox of this kind of music lets me take it really quiet and really loud. And I needed that dynamic range to be able to tell this story. Um, I, maybe certain other kinds of music wouldn't allow me to go to all the places that I needed to go. Um, And uh, I mean, I hope people, even people that aren't necessarily into this style of music can find something to enjoy about it. People that don't have the experiences that I have so far have been telling me well even though I know exactly I heard you say what this song is about to me it's about this other thing and I love that that's so cool to me I think there are a lot of people that want to leave their lyrics a mystery and to me I just find that people go well great I'm just going to ignore what the song is really about because when I heard it I felt this 
And so to me, I, I get to tell my story. I get to say what I was thinking when I wrote it without fear that it's going to miss somebody because of that. I think the way that you bring out the emotion through everything else, we definitely hear your lyrics, hmm. but we like parallel with you through it and bring our own story emotion with so we are just right alongside you rather than you know it's that so I don't listen to it or you know what I mean it just groups us together and enjoy it and that's, connect yeah that, that's so cool one of uh the artists that I discovered kind of right when I was starting to write this was Phoebe Bridgers, who writes the most specific lyrics of almost anybody I've ever heard. And it just connects so hard, even though I've never like been dumped by Ryan Adams or, or whatever, <laughs> like the, the very specific <laughs> things that she's talking about. Um, but it connects so hard and it just, it, it, it has met people on a level that to me is almost surprising but it does the same for me so even though I don't get it like it's clearly working um so I just things like that were able to allow me to throw off any fear or like any semblance of well I need to do it this way or else people aren't going to get it or I need to make it this style of music or people aren't going to connect I just needed to make the best record I could and uh Put it out there and see what people think and so far so good but i think you touched upon it you could have written in a more poppy way and more people would have kind of liked it or you can have your own album and have a, the right number of people love it mm. you know have it be a game changer for them wow yes thank you that's that's the hope i i really appreciate that that's good. well yeah i think it's more telling your truth letting us connect because we all have you know the things rather than bs just to sell or to be catchy this is like oh my gosh listen to this song hear this it pulls you like you leave an imprint rather than i'm humming whatever i don't know what the lyrics is but i'm just moving around where this is like i feel it yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, I've i listened to a good number of um, podcasts and things of that nature on songwriting. And a lot of people that write songs say, well, yeah, you start with this idea, but then you let it go wherever it wants to and you end up with a different idea. Well, I didn't really have that luxury. You know what I mean? Like I, if if it ends up being something completely different about something else, well, then maybe I wrote a cool song, but I have to shelve it because I'm trying to write this group of songs that tell this story um so yeah like I kind of had to stick to the plan as as much as I could and sometimes there were certain songs that I just got stuck on for the longest time the hardest one to write was Ode to Luigi which was about my son because it didn't have enough conflict in it you know what I mean like I, I, like I said, I try to write songs like movie scenes. So there has to be some sort of tension and maybe I resolve it in that song or a different song. And this was just like, my son is awesome. What do I do with this? <laughs> so I, uh, I found this weird setting that made my guitar sound like Pac-Man. And I wrote a song around that because my son just loves like Mario games and stuff. And um, it was, uh, you know, a song about um, Luigi, which to me is the greatest sidekick of all time. Like he's his a hero in his own right. Mario does not steal the show from Luigi. So it was sort of that was what it was based around. And I had a million versions that were cheesy. And when it was done, I was still like, oh, is this cheesy? And then like once you get, you know, a world-class drummer hammering away on it. You're like, no, this is just cool. <laughs> I just like this. How cool do your kids feel? Like, this is my song and that's my song. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. I, they, the song You Are is my daughter's favorite song of all of the songs in existence. Um, so whenever she's sad, I can put it on and she gets happy. It's this crazy magic bullet that I, that I have in my back pocket at all times. It's really wonderful 
that that has been like a a, a, a life hack for me, you know? Um, nice. And my my son likes Luigi a lot. He got a little bit sad at the line, um, uh, you'll make an unbreakable team if you'd stop kicking each other for just a minute. And he was like, no, I don't want people to know that we kick each other. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> that, is, that is what siblings do. This, that's what I'm writing about. I'm writing about the heart of the sibling relationship. But do you hear everything else that's around that? Like, th I'm trying to describe what it's like to love your sibling that you're just around all the time and sometimes things aren't perfect but you guys love each other so much and he's like okay I like it again now <laughs> and I didn't think it was gonna work I thought he was just gonna be mad at me for putting in that line but he he was he he likes it now again good that's good and I like the last song the welcome to Sydney which I'm assuming it's kind of rough on the welcome to Ho Holland. The... Yes, it is. Yes. I, I didn't. Okay. Let me ask you, <laughs> tell me how you know about this. Cause I used to be a librarian in an education library. So okay, I don't know how widely known it is, but I read, it took me a minute and I was like, you know, when I just read the song titles and I was like, Sydney, I wonder if that's the name of a child, you know? And then I, when you listen, I'm like, Oh, this is welcome to Holland. I'll let mm -hmm. you explain the. Okay. Do you, I, I always forget the name of the author of that? Uh, that I had to look up if I was going to ask you about this. Emily Pearl Kingsley. Emily Pearl Kingsley. I need to commit this to memory because I talk about her so much. Um, and obviously she's a part of this album and the part of the story because I riffed on that. So um, she wrote this article called Welcome to Holland. And it's about... Uh, someone who is planning a trip to Italy and they pack for Italy and they prepare for Italy and they get the guidebooks for Italy and they get on the plane. And when they arrive, they find out they're in Holland and they say, welcome to Holland. And they're like, okay, so what do I do with this guidebook? I packed wrong. I'm not ready for this. This is the worst. I'm, I wanted to go to Italy. Italy is my dream vacation. What is wrong with you? Why are you have? Why are you welcoming to me to, to Holland in such a happy way? This is not a happy day. So the parallel there is about having a kid that you weren't expecting. So could be special needs, um, and I think that's usually what it refers to. But for me, it's also you know health related stuff, things, just anything you weren't expecting, and it could probably apply to things that you know non children related things too. But what the end of the article talks about is, you know, you realize that Holland has tulips and you realize that Holland has Rembrandts and you realize that Holland has windmills and it's actually a really great place to have a vacation. You just need time to adjust. So this, there were a lot of things that people sent me when Alyssa was born that were not helpful to me. I just was like, nope, I don't want to think about whether or not she's going to go to college when she's 18. I don't want to like think about how she could be in the special Olympics because I thought my kid could go to the regular Olympics. I don't, they, you know, people are, are well-meaning and trying to say the right things, but there's not a lot of right things to say. And then I read this article and it was the first thing that connected me with me in a way that made a lot of sense. So the final song on Aorta Borealis, this record is called Welcome to Sydney. And uh, Sydney, first of all, is my daughter's middle name. So basically when the chorus is talking about, um, the chorus is like a brochure, like a pamphlet for Sydney. And so basically when I'm saying all the cool things about Sydney, it's like an advertisement for my daughter. <laughs> and uh, the, the other thing is we were able to take a trip to Sydney me and my wife have, have been there with my son, Tyler. Um, we lived in Singapore for a little while, so we were kind of close-ish. And we actually went to Australia three times in the three years that we lived in, uh, in Singapore. And uh, we went to Sydney and we did this Airbnb thing and it was infested with cockroaches. And so we had to work all that out. And our, on, you know, up until Christmas Eve, we were living with all these cockroaches and it was not the vacation that we were expecting. 
And then we moved uh, to a hotel, which cost a lot more money because it was last minute and it's around New Year's in Sydney. And if you know, if you watch like fireworks on TV, Sydney's always one of those. So this is like a destination place. You want to plan this months and months out, not go last minute and find a hotel because they're really expensive. And then we arrive there and we hook up to their, you know, Wi-Fi and stuff. And we start getting all these emails from various embassies and the woman who was living in our home who was providing childcare with us in Singapore when we went to work she died of a pulmonary embolism she was 42 years old mm. so we when we think about that trip we can think about cockroaches and a lot of unexpected expenses and the death of someone that we were really close to but we can also think about how we saw a play at the Sydney Opera House and how we went to one of the most amazing zoos that I've been to in my life. And we hung out with kangaroos and koalas and got to hold them. And because we were still able to have a really amazing vacation. Um, and it's sort of about how do you think about these things? How do you process them? How do you remember them? Are you choosing to focus on all the things that went wrong because things do go wrong and they are hard or do you choose to focus on all the great things that were mixed in there um so yeah that's kind of a, a summary of the album and the final line of the album says welcome home because to me the thing that's missing from the welcome to holland essay is this is not a vacation it's actually a permanent stay when you have a kid with special needs this is you you move to that place and um you can choose to call it home or you can choose to resent it and that for me was about choosing uh the happier of the options you're a smart man <laughs> <laughs> but i like how you give the grace of letting it digest you know a little bit and then go okay now i can, i see the light in the darkness you know you you allow real life real time and not um i don't know just allow it because a lot of people are like oh my gosh you're a parent you're supposed to do all the things perfectly or love this child a hundred percent right away which i'm not saying you don't but just just to digest all the things and then see the beauty that it's offering you. Cause I was going to say the ode to Luigi is you are thanking one of your kids for what they give you and what they've taught you. And I, I love that. Thank you. Um, I, one of the first pieces of feedback, I put this on, I'm in, I'm in this, a dad's Facebook group for dads of kids with Down syndrome. So it's very specific to me. And there's like a thousand plus, you know, dads in this group and it's growing really fast. And I put it out there and I said, hey, I've got this first sad song, the song I told you guys about, the first song in the record. And I was thinking about writing the, the rest of it and kind of put it out there. What, what do you guys think? Should I, should I try to do this? And response was relatively positive, but somebody on there said, you shouldn't talk about any of the negative things. There's just two people already have a certain view of, of people with Down syndrome and we don't want to encourage that. And so I had to think about that a lot. Can, and, and can I do this the way I want to do it and still have people perceive it correctly? And there still may be people that don't. There may be people that like, you know, the, my, my biggest fear is that people turn it off in before it gets to the second half. You know what I mean? And I'm there, there just might be people that say, well, this it, it's, there's too much somberness or negativity or whatever it is. But like, like I've talked about, I just had to be real about it. And to me, I hope it gives people the space to say, Hey, these feelings that I have, they're all right. They're not abnormal. And it's okay for me to have the space. And this particular family was able to kind of figure it out and they were able to find joy and they were able to admit that everything wasn't always great. Because when you're hit with bad news, especially heart surgery, like I said, being unequivocally bad, 
your response gets to be not happy. If you're pretending you're happy, uh, I don't know that you're going to like do great, you know? So I wanted to give space for all of the emotions. I hope people can understand and connect with all of them. Um, my hope is that this record is for everybody, but if it's not, that's okay. Like you said, it's, it's gonna, I already know that it's hit some people pretty hard and I hope to find more of those people. And, and there may be people who aren't ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. You know, cause they used to say about with, with women having kids, don't tell people. There are a lot, there are like a lot of things just don't, you know, she doesn't, that pregnant woman doesn't need to know if you've had three kids and what the story is. And, it, right. and I'm like, yeah. And some do and some don't. And some, I mean, you know, it's, but, but when you know you're not alone, I think there's huge power in that when you're ready to know you're not alone, when you're not, because that, that again is giving those people that time to mm -hmm. come to them. But, but I think you'll find the, you're going to, the right people will find it. Yeah, that's, that's right on what you said. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, I think it's powerful to pe for people to tell their stories in an authentic way and just say, hey, this is, this is me. Um, this is me telling you who I am. And um, I hope that that allows you to tell me who you are because I'm not hiding anything. Um, so I, yeah, I hope to hear from more people that, um, that connect with this and that hopefully this can be cathartic in some way, can be, um, uplifting in some way, because to me, sad songs like the beginning of like some of the ones are at the beginning of the record are happy songs in disguise in the sense that if you connect with them like okay so say let i mean you already know where i'm going say you have two friends right and you tell one person your sad story and they say the same thing happened to me and you hug and you cry that's a happy moment right and then you have another friend that you tell your sad story and they say well you know what you survived let's go party Let's go have a great time. Those are both good friends. Those are both uh, happy things. So the, the, the sad songs and the happy ones, they can both be something that brings, uh, that up, uplifts you in a way. And this album absolutely uplifts. And I think it'll be the start of conversations for, to come. So, it's, so thank you for such a, a beautiful album. We both wow. really enjoyed it so much. Let's, Thank you. Wow. Yeah. What amazing questions. I can tell you guys really <laughs> dug deep. Uh, not everybody does that. So thank you so much. We are happy to. Well, I will add this in the notes, but for folks who are just listening, what is the best way to find you online? Um, jessynorell.com is a great way to get started. Um, there are links for everything there, but I'm trying to be everywhere. It's a little exhausting to try to be everywhere. Um, but I'm on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. And um, I, uh, and you can uh, order CDs on my website, jessynorell.com, which if I can just plug that, that is probably the best way. I know not everybody does CDs anymore, but it's probably the best way to consume it. Just I, cause I think the worst thing that can happen is you're having a real emotional connection and then there's this like so the cd uh had i obviously got it and put it in and tested it and make sure it it had no little breaks or skips or pops or anything in it it came out just the way i wanted um so it if you're if you're a CD person, this I think this one works well for that. But yeah, I am, I'm I'm everywhere. If you can, R E L L, and if you can't, um, on a couple of platforms, I use the handle three two one, music dad. So the nice. three two one is for trisomy twenty one, which is the more technical name for Down syndrome, and then the music dad thing you obviously get. Perfect. Jesse, thank you. Thank you for a lovely album and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.